Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today I'm finally getting around uh, to one of those videos that I guess has been heavily requested over the past year or so, and that is an overview and comparison of the three main monitor technologies. I think some of you have been waiting quite some time for this one, sorry for I guess taking so long, but in this video I will be going through everything to give you a reference for when you're I guess maybe buying your next monitor or something like that. So the three main screen technologies used for LCDs, which are by far the most common type of display used for PC monitors are TN, IPS, and VA. I'm sure you've heard these terms before when you know researching monitors to purchase. This is a key piece of information on the spec sheet that reveals a lot about how the monitor will behave and perform. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into excruciating detail on the exact differences in the technologies themselves. But I think a brief overview is worth it. In the rest of this video, I will be more focused on the individual characteristics of the tech and how it performs, but I guess I can't get to that before I even mention what each term stands for. So TN is the oldest of the LCD technologies, and it stands for Twisted Pneumatic. This refers to the Twisted Pneumatic effect, which is an effect that allows liquid crystal molecules to be controlled with voltage. While the actual workings of a TN effect LCD are a little more complicated, essentially the TN effect is used to change the alignment of liquid crystals when a voltage is applied. When there is no voltage, so the crystal is off, the liquid crystal molecules are twisted 90 degrees and that allows light to pass through. Then when a voltage is applied, these crystals are essentially untwisted and in combination with polarization layers, block light from passing through. IPS stands for in-plane switching, and like all LCDs, it too uses voltage to control the alignment of liquid crystals. However, unlike with TN LCDs, IPS LCDs use a different crystal orientation, one where the crystals are parallel to the glass substrates, hence the term in-plane. Rather than twisting the crystals to modify the amount of light let through, IPS crystals are essentially rotated, which has a range of benefits. There are many IPS variants on the market, with each of the three big LCD manufacturers using a different term to describe their IPS type technology. LG simply calls their tech IPS, which is easy for everyone. Samsung uses the term PLS, or plane to line switching, while AU Optronics uses the term AHVA, or advanced hyper viewing angle. AHVA shouldn't be confused with regular VA displays, it's an a bit of an annoying and confusing name in my opinion, but AHVA is an IPS-like technology. Each of LG's IPS, Samsung's PLS, and AUO's AHVA are slightly different, but the fundamentals are rooted in IPS technology. Then we get to VA, which stands for vertical alignment. As the name suggests, this technology uses vertically aligned liquid crystals, which tilt when a voltage is applied to let light pass through. This is the key difference between IPS and VA. With VA, the crystals are perpendicular to the substrates, while with IPS, they are parallel. And again, there are several VA variants, including Samsung's SVA and AU Optronics AMVA. Again, don't confuse AMVA with AHVA, they are very different in technology, despite only a single letter name difference. So in summary, TN panels twist, IPS panels use a parallel alignment and rotate, while VA panels use a vertical alignment and tilt. Now let's get into some of the performance characteristics and explore how each of the technologies differ, and in general, which technology is better in any given category. By far the biggest difference between the three technologies is in viewing angles. TN panels have the weakest viewing angles with significant shifts to colors and contrast in both the horizontal and especially vertical directions. Typically, viewing angles are rated as 170-160, but realistically, you'll get pretty bad shifts when viewing anywhere except for dead center. Higher-end TNs tend to be somewhat better, but overall this is a big weakness for TNs. VA and IPS panels are both significantly better, with IPS being the best overall for viewing angles. 178-178 viewing angle ratings are a largely realistic reflection of what you can expect with an IPS. You won't get much shift in colors or contrast from an angle. VAs are good in this regard, but not as good as IPS, mostly due to contrast shifts at off-center angles. With VAs and especially TNs having some color and contrast shifts when viewing at angles, they're not as well suited to color critical professional work as IPS panels, which is why you see most pro grade monitors sticking to IPS. 
In terms of brightness, there's no inherent differences between the technologies because the backlight, which determines brightness, is separate to the liquid crystal panel. However, there are significant differences to contrast ratios, and again, this is an area most people look at when determining which panel type they want. Both TN and IPS panels tend to have a contrast ratio around 1000 to 1, although in my testing I have noticed some differences. TN panels tend to have the lowest contrast ratios when calibrated, with an entry-level panel sitting between 700 and 900 to 1, and good panels pushing up to that 1000 to 1 mark. IPS has a larger range, I've seen some as low as 700 to 1 like TNs, however the very best tend to push up higher than TN, with 1200 to 1 the upper range for monitors and some laptop grade displays reaching as high as 1500 to 1. Neither TN nor IPS get to the range of VA though, entry level VA panels start with a contrast ratio of 2000 to 1 from those that I've tested, with the best easily exceeding 4500 to 1, although 3000 to 1 is a typical figure for most monitors. TVs also make extensive use of VA panels and their contrast ratios can be even higher. It's not unusual to see over 6000 to 1. So if you want deep blacks and high contrast ratios, you'll need to go with something VA. While IPS panels tend to be a middle ground for contrast, they do suffer from a phenomenon called IPS glow, which is an apparent white glow when viewing dark imagery at an angle. The best panels exhibit minimal glow, but it's still an issue across all displays of this type. Color quality is another difference many people cite between TN displays and other displays in particular. And this can be split into two categories, color depth or bit depth and color gamut. In both of these regards, TN panels tend to fall on the weaker end of the scale. Many TN displays, in particular entry-level models, are only natively 6-bit and use frame rate control, otherwise called FRC or dithering, to achieve standard 8-bit output. 6-bit panels are prone to color banding, while native 8-bit panels have smoother color gradients and therefore better color output. That's not to say all TN panels are 6-bit, the very top-end TNs are native 8-bit, but it's safe to say most TNs will only be native 6-bit even today. If you are after a native 8-bit display, you'll need to go with either IPS or VA, where many more panels come native 8-bit. While there are still 6-bit entry-level IPS and VA panels, pretty much all mid-range to high-end options are 8-bit these days. As for native true 10-bit, typically you'll need to look for an IPS panel, which make up the majority of native 10-bit panels. Some VA panels can do it, but they are pretty rare. Most displays you actually purchase that claim to be 10-bit are actually 8-bit plus FRC, with only high-end professional grade monitors offering a native 10-bit experience. For color gamut, again, this is an area where VA and IPS provide a superior experience. The best TN panels tend to be limited to sRGB, or in the case of the worst entry-level panels, they don't even cover the entirety of the sRGB gamut. Again, this isn't to say wide gamut TN panels don't exist, they are just quite rare, so almost all TN panels on the market, you'll be stuck with just sRGB. VA panels typically start with full sRGB coverage as a minimum, and depending on the panel, can push higher. VAs that use a quantum dot film, typically from Samsung, offer higher gamuts around the 125% sRGB or 90% DCI-P3 mark. Most of the wide gamut VA monitors I've tested fall between 85 and 90% DCI-P3 coverage, which is a decent result, though the best can approach 95% or higher. With IPS panels, there is the largest variance. Entry-level IPS displays tend to offer 95% sRGB coverage or less, while the majority stick to full sRGB coverage. Then with high-end displays, usually for professionals, it's not unusual to see full DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB coverage. Of all the wide gamut IPS displays I've tested, the lowest DCI-P3 coverage I've seen has been 93%, with over 95% a typical figure. This makes IPS the best technology for wide gamut work. Work. Throughout most of this discussion, we've been talking about TN as the worst of the three technologies. So far, it has had the worst color reproduction, contrast ratios, and viewing angles of the three main options. But it does have one key advantage, and that comes in the form of speed. TN panels are the best for both refresh rates and response times. Currently, TN panels are the only panel type able to hit 240 Hz, doing so at 1080p and also now 1440p. VA panels top out at 200 Hz for ultra-wide displays, however most 16.9 models are limited to 165 Hz. It's similar with IPS panels, which top out at 165 Hz, although a 240 Hz 1080p option is in the works at LG.
While IPS panels are able to refresh at 144 Hz and above, the number of panels which are high refresh is pretty limited compared to both VA and TN. Most IPS displays, especially high grade options for professionals as well as entry level office monitors, are either 60 or 75 hertz. Meanwhile, a significantly large number of VA panels across a wider range of sizes and resolutions are high refresh, while the big selling point of TN is its super high refresh capabilities. The other major consideration is response times, which govern the level of ghosting, smearing, and I guess the overall clarity of a panel. Early IPS and VA panels were very slow. However, this has improved a lot with modern panels, so the differences between the three technologies aren't as pronounced as they once were. With that said, TN still holds a strong advantage here compared to the other types. Most TN panels have a rate of transition time of one millisecond or even lower with some recent releases. Actual greater grade averages I've measured for TN panels tend to be in the two to three millisecond range when overdrive is factored in, which makes TN the clear fastest technology. IPS panels are the next fastest, though as tends to be the case with IPS, there is a wide variance between the best and worst of this type. High-end IPS monitors, typically those with high refresh rates, can have a transition time as fast as 4 milliseconds from what I've measured. Compared to the best TN panels, this makes IPS at best twice as slow. However, entry-level IPS panels or those without overdrive sit more in the 10 millisecond range, while your mid-tier options tend to occupy the 5 to 7 millisecond bracket. VA panels are consistently the slowest of the three types. The absolute fastest I've measured has been between 5 and 6 milliseconds, though more typical numbers are between 8 and 10 milliseconds for gaming grade monitors. VA panels also tend to be less consistent with their transitions. Some individual transitions can be fast, while others very slow, whereas IPS panels and TN panels tend to hover more around their overall greater grey average. While a lot of people are unlikely to spot the difference between an 8 millisecond VA panel and a 5 millisecond IPS, TN panels are, at least from my experiences, noticeably clearer in motion. The slowness of VA panels also limits their real-world refresh rate. A 144Hz panel that only manages a 9 millisecond response time is actually delivering an image most equivalent to a 110Hz panel, whereas most 144Hz IPS panels can transition faster than the 694 millisecond refresh window, leading to a true 144Hz experience. So that is something to consider. So that pretty much wraps up the comparison. As a quick summary for you guys, TN panels are the fastest and have the highest refresh rates. However, they have the worst viewing angles by far, as well as weak color performance and typically the lowest contrast ratios. TNs are typically used for high-end ultra-fast gaming displays, as well as budget class displays for both desktop monitors and laptops. IPS is a middle ground technology, they typically have the best colour performance and viewing angles, mid-tier response times and refresh rates, along with mid-tier black levels and contrast ratios. Due to its top-end colour output, IPS panels are the go-to choice for professionals, but you'll also find them in entry-level displays, office-grade monitors, most laptops, and a small handful of gaming monitors. VA panels are the slowest of the three, but have the best contrast ratio and black levels by far. Color performance isn't quite at the level of IPS, but they still offer a significantly better experience than TN in this regard. With response times for the best modern VAs approaching the level of a typical IPS, along with broad support for high refresh rates, VA panels are commonly used for gaming monitors. Entry-level VAs also tend to be superior to both entry-level TN and IPS panels, though you won't find VA used in laptops. Overall, there's really no right answer as to which monitor technology is the best because all three have their strengths and weaknesses, which is why I guess all three of them still coexist on the market today. However, if you really want my recommendation, I tend to gravitate towards VA panels for most buyers, especially gamers, and those after something entry level. Creative professionals should be looking exclusively at IPS monitors for their superior color performance, while those after something dirt cheap or ultra high refresh for competitive gaming should opt for TN. And that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully that has answered the question I keep getting asked about TN versus IPS versus VA for modern monitors. I guess as well it should serve as a good reference for future monitor reviews. Please do subscribe for more monitor content. Should have a few reviews coming up soon. And as always, consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams. I'll catch you in the next one.